used to seeing this many people at Jacob's Well, but I haven't really been coming here a lot during the cool of the day. I usually come here when it's really hot. Until something that happened to me right here at Jacob's Well not very long ago. And if you don't mind, since we're all waiting in line to get our water anyway, I'd like to tell you about it. Well, it doesn't matter if you mind, I'm going to tell you anyway, because I just can't quit talking about this. It's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. You see, there was a time when I would not be seen anywhere where there was other people, especially at Jacob's Well. So I would always wait until I felt like everybody had probably already gone to the well to get their water before I would go, <clears throat> which meant I was usually going in the blazing hot part of the day. And on this day that I was telling you about earlier, that changed the day that changed my life, it was one of those days, a little bit like it is today. Really, really hot. The sun was blazing down, and I just was, you know, so thirsty and hot and tired and sweating. But the reason that I went to the well that day, it wasn't my preference. I never wanted to go to the well alone. I had always dreamed what it would be like to go to the well with a companion, like somebody from my village. Um, you know, we could swap recipes on the way, talk about our families, catch up on all the sidecar gossip. But sadly, I was the source of their gossip. It was me that they were talking about. And that's why on that hot day, I was going to the well again alone. It was a hot day, like I said before. I was sweating. I was so parched and dry and thirsty. And the only thing that motivated me to get to the well that day was the, was the thought that I could dip down into that cold, refreshing water from Jacob's well and take a long, cool drink. So I kept trekking along. But as I got close to the well, I could see there was a man at the well who was sitting on a stone there. And I thought, oh, dear. Well, I didn't want to turn back now. So I decided, you know what? If I just keep my head down and, and just mind my own business and go about my task, it won't matter. He, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Furthermore, as I could see him from a distance, I could tell just by his appearance that he was a Jewish man. <laughs> well, if you're from these parts, you know two things. Men and women don't usually talk to each other in public. And secondly, Jews and Samaritans, they do not get along. In fact, Jews dislike us Samaritans so much that if they are on a, going somewhere and the route takes them through Samaria, they will walk all the way around it to get to where they're going. All because we built a temple and they didn't agree with that. So I figured, Jewish man, Samaritan woman, I felt pretty safe that this guy wouldn't talk to me. So I kept my head down, like I said before, and I just kept going to the well, and I got up to it, didn't look him in the eye, didn't say anything, just acted like he wasn't there, and I started maneuvering the pulley to get my water, and the man spoke to me, and he said, woman, give me a drink. I was like, what? I said, you, a Jewish man, is going to ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? And then he said, if you knew the gift that God has for you and who I am, you would ask me for a drink and I would give you living water. Okie dokie, I thought, okay, I think the heat has really gotten to this dude. He is talking delirious now. So I said, sir, you don't have anything to dip with and the well is deep. Besides, do you think you're better than our father Jacob, who gave us this well? Who he and his sons and his cattle have drank from for years? And that's when he stood up. And he pointed to Jacob's well. And he said, those that drink from this well, they'll thirst again. But the water I give, it is like a perpetual well springing up into eternal life. 
Hmm. Living water. Boy, that sounded like a good plan to me. If I didn't have to, if I didn't have to come to this well in the heat of the day to dodge the judgment and the criticism and the looks that I get everywhere I go, that would be awesome. So maybe this guy knew of a stream or somewhere that I could go and get this water. So I said, sir, tell me how to go about getting this living water. And he said, okay, go get your husband and bring him back, and I'll tell you both. Well, I told him, I don't have a husband. And that's when he said something that <laughs> I couldn't believe. He said, I know. It's true. You don't have a husband. In fact, you've had five husbands. And the man that you're living with now, he is not your husband. <sighs> Talking about taking the wind out of your sails. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. There it was. My sin, my shame, my guilt, spoken from the words of a Jewish man that I don't even know, that knows nothing about me. How in the world would he know this? I know he didn't hear it from any of my people from my village in Samaria. I know he didn't hear it from them because Jews and Samaritans, like I said, they don't, they don't talk. All I could figure, this man, he must be a prophet. So I said, sir, I can see that you're a prophet. So tell me, why is it that your people think that Jerusalem is the only place you can go to worship. And my people think right here on this mountain where our ancestors worshiped is the only place. And then he said something really, really that got my attention. He said, there is coming a time, in fact, it is here now, that it won't matter who you are or where you come from or what you've done but you can worship in spirit and truth, heart and mind. Because God is spirit, and he is looking for those that will, that will worship him in the same way, in spirit and in truth. <sighs> wow. That was just balm to my weary, weary soul. Because where do I go to worship? A sinner such as I, I can't go to the temple. I can't, I can't come here to the mountain. So to know that I can worship the Father in spirit and truth, it just heart and mind, that's all that I need to worship him? That just sounded wonderful. I didn't know what to think. I've spent a good chunk of my life just being confused and, and just... Uncontent, discontent. And so the only hope that I've been holding on to for all these years is that one day the Messiah will come back, the promised Christ, and he'll make everything clear to us. So I didn't know what to think about this guy's words, but I said to him, Sir, I don't know about that, but I do know that when the Messiah comes back, he'll make everything clear for us. And it was then that I, I turned and I looked at him and I looked right into his eyes. Now, this is part of my story I'm not very proud of, but I'm learning it is part of my story. I have looked into the eyes of a lot of men, six to be exact if you're counting, and I've never had anyone look at me like that. His eyes were tender and gentle and, and full of love. Love like, not romantic love, but love that was a forgiving kind of a love. A, an unconditional kind of love. A love that filled me with peace that I haven't felt in a really long time. And I just stood there looking into his eyes, and then he said to me, the one that you're speaking of, the Messiah, I am he. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? This, 
this man. He said he was the Messiah, and even though I was so confused, I had to believe it. He knew everything about me. I just stood there dumbfounded, looking into those beautiful eyes. About that time, a group of men came up. There's about a dozen of them. I learned later that they were his friends, but they didn't seem friendly to me. I could see the looks, those all familiar looks that I get in the village. So I didn't want to deal with that. I just wanted to bask in the moment of possibly being with my Savior. And suddenly it dawned on me, I'm not even thirsty anymore. I had come to the well that day to have my thirst quenched, and I would leave there feeling refreshed and renewed in a way that I had never experienced before. I didn't even pick up my bucket. I just took off. I had to run into my village and tell everybody I knew what had just happened to me. Me, sinful, shame-filled me, the lady who never talks to anybody, the lady that doesn't even go into the marketplace. I could not wait to tell someone about the Messiah. Could it be? Come and see, I wanted to say. Come and see the man who knows everything about me. And I did just that. I went into my village, and I told the first people that I saw, come and see, come and see a man who told me everything about me and loves me anyway. Could he really be the Messiah? They took me seriously, and they met Jesus on the path. Yes, that's right, it was Jesus. And they met him on the path, and they invited he and his disciples to come into our village and stay with us for a while. And they did. They stayed with us a couple of days, and we sat at his feet, and we learned, and we felt his love. Now listen, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here. All glory goes to God. But if I had not gone and told everybody that I saw about the Messiah, many people would not have believed. But because I did, many people believed that those couple of days. They told me, we no longer believe because of what you said. We believe because of what he has told us. He is the Messiah, the Savior. I have since learned that I was the first person, not toot my horn here again, I was the first person that Jesus revealed himself to that gets me right here every time I think about it. Me, sinful, shame-filled, condemned me, a sinner such as I. Now, that doesn't say anything about my character, but it says everything about his character. I want to have that character too. I want to give that character, that character of Jesus to others. I want people to feel loved the way I felt loved on that day. So I just can't quit telling my story. And I encourage you, if you don't know the Messiah, get to know him. Take him up on his offer for that living water that will give you eternal life. Maybe you already know the Messiah. Do you know the Messiah? Then go tell somebody. Do you know the Messiah? Shout it from the mountaintops. Do you know the Messiah, sir? Let everybody you know know your story. Well, it looks like it's about time for me to go get my water from the well. Thank you so much for letting me share my story. Now, you go and tell your story. Jesus, thank you so much for giving all of us a story to tell. Thank you for revealing yourself to us just where we're at, for loving us no matter where we're from, where we've been or what we've done. Give us boldness now that we can go and share your story with others. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs>